we have representatives from the bank of punjab if they can uh, kindly shed some light on the current regulatory framework governing esg financing for commercial banks and also their state of readiness for adoption of esg financing principles framework and what interventions can be considered to promote and accelerate the adoption of esg based financing by commercial banks over to you ji sure thank you very much mustafa saab uh, thank you very much pci and stpi and all the participants uh, for inviting us to this meeting quick introductions my name is umar khan i head investment banking at the bank of punjab and i've got my colleagues uh, naim javed and uh, tayyab who look at our project finance desk thank you mustafa saab for your questions and uh, so you know being supposedly the lone representative of the banking fraternity here um can i have the hosting rights please i would just like to put up a few slides for the benefit of everyone present there so um uh, in terms of the current regulatory framework as it applies to the commercial banks and efis in pakistan um what we have right now from the central bank which is the state bank of pakistan is that we have green banking guidelines applicable for banks and efis to implement within one year of the issuance they were issued in october of 2017 um uh, broadly they cover the four areas uh, you know the board of directors of the banks have to be responsible for green banking and the policy necessary policies to this respect have to be developed and banks need to establish a common focal department so to speak which is called the green banking office um which is also supposed to monitor the compliance of green banking guidelines and the policies uh environmental risk management uh for all the financing facilities of the bank whether they are to corporate sector or commercial sector except for consumer financing for obvious reasons uh and again in in so far as the paper goes it is supposed to cover environmental due diligence environmental risk rating risk monitoring reporting and documentation i'll quickly go over this and then i'll also share what exactly is the current state of play at the commercial banks just to be very candid um you know banks are also supposed to have uh, a development of a green market through tapping various business opportunities and obviously the idea is to facilitate and promote green businesses uh you know for development of policies and portfolios banks are also supposed to reengineer uh, their own internal operations and procedures to reduce the impact on the environment and the society you know going paperless looking at renewable energy atms uh uh are branches offices efficiency uh, projects and so on and so forth just as an addition to that in november of 2022 state bank issued an environmental and social risk management implementation manual and we are supposed to comply with its provisions by november of 2025 so basically it's a three year time frame um and you know we are supposed to accelerate and strengthen development of our systems which were mentioned in the green banking guidelines already only the social risk aspects have been added and i see representatives of sccp also here so please correct me if i'm wrong but as per our nation understanding i think sccp has also issued relevant regulations in 2019 and banks obviously by virtue of being listed entities we are supposed to present and have an esc policy in place to disclose implementation of our initiatives uh now again i think as some of the colleagues uh, you know who are present uh, in person there have also mentioned there is no shortage of relevant regulations and policies it's it's basically the volition and the buy in of commercial banks as significant stakeholders and capital market participants uh, you know as applicable we believe and again as representative of the banking industry that by and large most of the commercial banks are only doing it because it is being put forward there is no buy in on their own part they are not i don't think they are fully convinced frankly on the merits of undertaking this and and as it happens with most things uh, in so far as commercial banks we are a large unwieldy body uh, collectively we are about 40 odd commercial banks uh, but i think as as my colleague naim will also mention in the next slide uh, i think that the commercial banks who have on who have looked at it with any degree of seriousness uh, you know they will hardly be two to three banks other banks are only doing it more as a lip service uh, 
so yes, on paper, they would have all the systems, they would have the people, they would have the green banking office involved. But if you practically go ahead and ask them, have they instituted these policies and have they adopted them? I think most of them will be searching for answers. So uh, as of now, banks have developed their internal green banking policies in line with the guidelines of State Bank of Pakistan. But mostly uh, uh, these policies are in place, but they are not very effectively uh, being practiced. And in an industry of over 40 banks, uh, there are only one or two institutions who have dedicated and who are following these banking uh, guidelines through a dedicated office in true spirit and form. Uh, I believe because these are regulatory guidelines only, they are not regulatory requirements. So that is why banks are not really pushed to implement them. As far as incentives are uh, concerned, so banks uh, had extended a large sum of financing for renewable energy projects when they got subsidized financing from State Bank of Pakistan. But uh, these subsidized financings are also now on hold uh, given the uh, economic situation in the country. So uh, a significant work on that side is also on hold as of now. While there is a demand uh, for green financing in the country, availability of funding is a limitation. And out of 40 banks only, uh, seven or eight banks have actually experience of extending financing on a large scale. Uh, in collaboration with international banks and DFI so that only these banks understand the framework of ESG uh, per se, so, uh, which is on very lower side if we consider given we have 40 odd banks in Pakistan. Only one bank as of now uh, is accredited with Green Climate Fund. And uh, as we understand, uh, just two more banks are under the process of completing their accreditation. Bank of Punjab is one of uh, these two banks. But obviously, this accreditation process takes time. And once these banks get accredited, we expect there would be significant flow of uh, funding uh, through this venue as well. We also have, I'm sure, uh, you know, there, there would be enough expertise around the table, but specifically insofar as it relates to commercial banks uh, and what, what little uh, understanding we have of uh, the countries close to hand, I think India and Bangladesh and in this order, um, I think they are ahead of the curve, uh, you know, where we are right now. And a couple of things uh, which we have also covered, you know, taking cues from what, what uh, these countries have done, we have also incorporated as part of our suggested interventions, which we will cover in the next slide. What Bangladesh has done is nothing new. In fact, it has been practiced by our central bank also in the case of housing finance uh, about two years ago. So the idea is, you know, as I said before, a carrot and a stick approach works best for us. Um, so basically what Bangladesh Central Bank suggested is that a minimum of 2% of all commercial bank financing has to be uh, geared towards green financing and 15% towards sustainable financing. Uh, and again, sustainable financing help desks should be there. So the core takeaway from this is that there have to be mandatory targets of sorts or initially voluntarily and then on a step up basis they can be converted into mandatory targets this is something which pakistan also did about two years ago in the case of construction and housing finance and securities and exchange commission of bangladesh also uh, introduced mandatory disclosures uh, on various corporate governance issues uh, then there was a 200 million dollar green transformation fund uh, uh, again the idea was to provide financing for relevant infrastructure um, and then there were certain other climate change resilience funds and a couple of other interventions also. Um, in India also, and I think uh, I think just one point I would like to mention that the BSC, which is the Bombay Stock Exchange, S&P 100 ESC index was introduced. And I think one of the colleagues who is present on, you know, there in, in the hall also, also suggested something to this effect. Uh, so, so the idea was companies which were meet, meeting sustainability investing criteria, uh, you know, they were exclusively the companies that were uh, featured in, into that index, and the index has generated total returns of over 96% of the last five years. So obviously this works, this makes sense from a financial standpoint also. Lastly, uh, you know, given our limited understanding, and again, because, you know, we are practitioners, uh, 
and we are the ones who are supposed to be undertaking and uh, you know projects on the ground interventions on the ground so there are a couple of suggestions which we would like to put forward to the forum for for their consideration uh, firstly as i said you know this is mostly lip service if i am to be very candid in most commercial banks this is mostly lip service uh, there is no real expertise which resides in commercial banks we are all effectively finance professionals but there is no esc expertise in house um in the commercial banks uh, for us to develop policies because most of the commercial banks have literally just copy pasted the you know the guidelines uh, given by the central bank which obviously is not the right way to go about it right um so it has to be infused and inculcated in the entire fabric of credit evaluation of the commercial banks and dfis i think it's very important so capacity building is key uh, and to that end again we are not trying to park a lot of uh, uh, burden on the central bank but we banks respond very very favorably to directives of the central bank so we think state bank is in a is in a very uh, unique position to facilitate the such capacity building sessions with renowned experts uh, you know to to have sort of a um, a detailed training program uh, for the staff of the commercial banks at least the relevant people who will be working on these interventions or these initiatives on the regulatory side uh you know we believe that uh, central bank has a great power so what it can do is that to promote or encourage investment on the green banking or the sustainable uh, financing exposure side state bank can suggest or institute lower risk weights on environmental friendly exposure so right now there's a uh, there's there's a whole classification of exposures and different kinds of exposures carry different kinds of risk weights which are demands on the capital of the bank so to promote investment uh, you know sustainable financing exposures can carry lower risk weights um, i think it's very important that banks should be held accountable to clearly defined deliverables um, as opposed to you know sort of an amorphous or an intangible type you know general guiding principle that yes you are supposed to have this um, again a state bank can introduce phase targets in a staggered basis such as which was done in bangladesh and deviation from these targets should carry fines and penalties again nothing new done by bangladesh successfully done in pakistan two years ago for housing finance also uh, and again uh, you know as i said banks typically because you know we are supposed to be lenders so anything which makes commercial sense a commercial banks will do will go for it so there has to be clear discouragement uh, whether in the form of higher capital charge or other financial disincentives for banks lending exposures to environmentally hazardous industries um uh, again the apex regulator and the psx should introduce re credits i think some of the colleagues in the hall also mentioned this uh, we can have a domestic trading hub for this also so so one is you mentioned uh, you know one entity already which is doing it uh, out of pakistan but i think uh, something of a secondary market for these credits uh, for listed companies domestically can also be explored uh again on the lines of bsx uh, right next door uh, our neighbor next door we can have an esc companies index uh and that will also as one of the colleagues also mentioned promote foreign investment here much needed dollar investment because uh you know we are short on dollars in any event again um uh, some sort of uh, medium term program has to be there so i think state bank had a very good intervention in terms of extending concessional renewable energy facilities and i think uh, the industry really really adopt you know took to it uh, and and a number of projects both utility scale and uh, uh, you know uh, captive were benefited out of it uh, however obviously because of the shortage of funding absolutely so these facilities have been halted as of now so i think the idea should be to not have a stop start approach we understand the constraints that the country is facing but i think we need to have at least a 5 or a 10 year program and the commercial rates whatever they are they may not be as cheap as they were before but whatever those commercial rates are they should be on a concessional basis to what the market rates are and then they should be sustained over a longer period for the necessary results to come up um again i think is very important stakeholders uh the rating agencies i think they do have some sort of a rating criteria but i think the rating agencies together with the apex regulators need to institute a mechanism 
uh, where at least as per our suggestion, uh, any entity should not have the possibility of achieving the highest entity rating, which is AAA, unless they have a satisfactory ESC performance score. So these were some of the suggested enablers and interventions that we could think of with, that we uh, wanted to put uh, you know, for your consideration. That's about it. Thank you very much. Very comprehensive and very good presentation. I think a uh, lot, uh, lot of meat, a lot of key constructive points that you have. Thank you very much for your very comprehensive presentation.